moved all the equipment here to Texas and just kind of started over. My life kind of got to be this big media spectacle and I didn't work anymore. But come to realize like it's what I'm meant to do. If I'm not working and not killing myself in front of the forge or at my workbench or in my hammer, I feel like I'm cheating myself. I feel like I'm doing something wrong. I went to SHOT Show and people were, you know, gave me a really warm reception. Like, you should make guns. We should do this. You should do that. I saw an opening for where I could fit in with what I do and make stuff the way I make it. I went to Israel because I've done everything with metalwork, tinsmith, coppersmith. The last thing I wanted to learn to do was blacksmithing and lived on a kibbutz with a guy named Yuri Hoffi and then learned skills and then I wanted to learn to forge weld. Two years ago, I couldn't figure out how to do it. I thought you had to just kill it, get it to stick together, but it's actually, you could see, I just like kiss it and it makes it one piece because this was four pieces of metal when we started this morning, so now it's one bar. Delivering a firearm to someone, it, it, they're gonna have it and their kid's gonna have it and their kid's kid's gonna have it. A bike, bikes are like boats and jet skis and quads. As soon as chips are down, boom, that's the first thing on Craigslist. But guns, people hang on to it for generations and so doing something that's so personal and such a personal item and knowing that they're gonna keep it forever, it, it's a tall order. This is Jesse James. He's built an empire off of the unlikely combination of custom motorcycles and television shows. And now, he's making guns. That's it. I come from South Central LA where it's like home invasion robberies and carjackings. So like, if you don't have a pump action shotgun in your house, you're dumb. You know, you're a dummy. Jesse James Firearms Unlimited, with the cheeky acronym JJFU, follows a string of lucrative businesses. Arguably much of Jesse's success has come from marketing his unique personality. He's a biker with Pay Up Sucker tattooed on the palm of his hand, but he's also disarmingly friendly and straightforward. When I first contacted JJFU about coming down to the workshop in Austin, I expected the usual endless back and forth with PR people. Instead, Jesse personally sent me this five-word email. Come on, dogs! Jesse takes popular gun models like the AR-15 and the 1911, but recreates them in his own personal style, a style that he tries to make timeless. It's easy to do stuff that's in the now, you know, put skulls and barbed wire all over it and make it trendy, but like when you put it in your safe and then pull it out in 15 years, you're gonna be like, what the f was I thinking? That looks terrible. Jesse isn't just managing a shop. He's spending hours in front of his forge every day doing some pretty advanced metal work. For instance, the wood-like pattern on this pistol isn't a paint job. It's called Damascus steel, and it takes about three days for him to make a single piece. Damascus is basically the same type of material they use to make samurai swords out of. You just forge it and then cut it and then fold it over and then two, then four. This is 450 layers, so you can imagine the time, how time consuming it is. Super labor intensive for like a cool effect. In 2010, I had a shop and 200 employees, completely vertical manufacturing. I was miserable. Sometimes bigger and more money and more responsibility and more bull****. That's not success. The elephant in the room with that time in Jesse's life is his very public divorce with actress Sandra Bullock. He became a pariah in LA and ended up making a fresh start in Austin inspired by an experience he'd had a year earlier. In 2009, I went to Israel and lived on a kibbutz and apprenticed to be a blacksmith with the best like traditional blacksmith in the world, a, a man named Yuri Hafi. And then just started reconnecting with my hands on work again. 
I'm gonna be 45. You start thinking about your own mortality and like, what is your legacy? It's between actual success that you can hold in your hand and touch or perceived success, which is like, oh, I sold so many stocks. Oh, really? Big deal, you know? Craftsmanship is a legacy that'll last forever. I fired in the truck for like three days and some of that 112 octane. It's like a drone. Go! I think I have to remind myself what I really love in life and I think just the mayhem of this, I love it.